Hello everyone, in this short video I'm going to cover blood vessels, or at least start the conversation on blood vessels. Okay, here are the learning objectives. I'm going to contrast the structure and function of arteries, veins, and capillaries. Explain vasoconstriction, vasodilation, and their effects on blood flow and pressure. Describe the two pathways of blood flow through capillaries from arterial to venule. And explain the respiratory pump, skeletal muscles, and valves, or explain how, rather, respiratory pump, skeletal muscles, and valves help move blood through veins. It is the responsibility of the blood vessels to distribute blood to the tissues and then return it to the heart. As I have mentioned earlier, the cardiovascular system is a closed system. It must prevent blood loss from that system and maintain pressure while distributing blood to the tissues and back to the heart. Any blood that escapes that system is picked up by the lymphatic system or small amounts are lost by evaporation. This is a figure from your book. It basically illustrates the relationship between arteries, veins, and capillaries. So blood leaves the heart here and flows through first very large arteries. And then those very large arteries divide into smaller arteries and into still smaller arteries, eventually leading to the small of the arteries, which are the arterioles. So I like to say that blood flows from the heart to the capillaries through increasing numbers of increasingly smaller blood vessels called arteries. So we go start with a few very large arteries and then we uh, blood flows into lots of small arteries, eventually to arterioles, the smallest of arteries that then lead to the capillaries. Arteries then leave the capillaries drained by first lots of very small veins called venules. They're just small veins. And then those venules merge into bigger veins, which merge into bigger veins, which merge into a smaller number of even bigger veins eventually leading back to the heart either via the inferior vena cava or the superior vena cava. So I like to say blood flows from the capillaries back to the heart through decreasing numbers of increasingly larger blood vessels, which we call veins. And this is sort of a overlap with what we're studying in lab this week in the blood vessels lab. One of the themes of this anatomy and physiology class is, of course, the relationship between form and function, or the relationship between anatomy and physiology, and how very much the function of a structure or an organ is very much related to its function. So the arteries are the closest blood vessels to the heart. They carry blood of the highest pressure, and as those ventricles contract and recoil or relax, they have to, the arteries, have to be able to stretch with every systole or contraction and recoil with every diastole. So they're much more elastic. Veins are farthest away from the ventricles. Blood pressure in the veins are is low at all times. They don't uh, have to endure that pressure wave of increased pressure, decreased pressure that occurs as the heart beats, and so they are they are less elastic. Capillaries, of course, provide they're the only blood vessels that provide an exchange of substances between the blood and the tissue. The arteries simply carry blood to the capillaries, the veins from the capillaries back to the heart. It's in the capillaries where there's actually exchange of substances between the blood and the tissue. So we have three different blood vessels with very different functions, and that's going to be evident in their anatomy or structure. Look now at the arteries and veins, the walls of the arteries and veins 
in particular. And this again is overlap uh, with uh, with the lab. So I'll I'll go up somewhat briefly. But the walls of arteries and veins have three tunics, going from the outer excuse me the inner tunic to the outer tunic. The inner tunic is called the tunica intima. It consists of a layer of simple squamous epithelial cells, which is called the endothelium. Now, this is a very, very low friction surface. It's low friction because this, this layer is in contact with the blood that flows through it. And we want as little friction as possible because that friction is resistance or peripheral resistance to blood flow. Deep to that, we have some connective tissue. And then in the arteries, we have an, what's called an internal elastic lamina, which is a layer of elastic tissue, because the arteries need to be uh, more elastic, able to stretch and recoil. We don't have that uh, elastic lamina in the tunica intima or tunica interna of the vein. Next tissue layer is the tunica media or middle tunica. Notice that there's a layer of smooth muscle in both, uh, sorry, in the tunica media of both the vein and the artery. However, it is much thicker in the artery. And in fact, it is the smooth muscle in the tunica media that is responsible for the significantly thicker wall we find in arteries compared to veins. And if we look at this cross section of, a, of, of an actual electron microscope, um, scan of an artery and vein, you can see that uh, the artery, even though it's much smaller than this vein, has a much thicker wall. And that most of the thickness of that wall or is due to the tunica media. Now, what does that greater amount of smooth muscle allow? Well, it allows for vasoconstriction and vasodilation. So um, the walls of a blood vessel contain those uh, smooth muscles in the tunica media. And when those smooth muscles contract, that causes vasoconstriction, where the lumen gets smaller. Imagine you and some other people in class holding hands in a circle and pretend that like your smooth muscles. If you were to bring your arms in close to your body, everyone would have to take a step forward and the circle would get smaller. Well, that's what happens when your blood vessels constrict or vasoconstriction. When those smooth muscles relax, imagine um, you, you and your buddies taking a step back in that circle and stretching your arms out as far as you can. Well, the circle is gonna get bigger and the same thing happens to the lumen of a blood vessel. So as smooth muscles relax, that causes vasodilation. As smooth muscles contract, that causes vasoconstriction. Because arteries have a much thicker layer of smooth muscle compared to veins, they have a much uh, greater capacity to uh, in, de uh, change their size vaso via vasoconstriction or vasodilation. Before we go to the, the tunica externa, I, I also wanted to point out that the tunica media of the uh, artery also has another layer of elastic tissue. Again, the artery needs to be much more elastic compared to the vein because it's got to be able to stretch and recoil. And elasticity does not refer to the ability of um, a substance to stretch. It refers to the ability of a substance to return to its normal length and shape after it stretches. Lastly, we have the, exter the, the most external tunic or the tunica externa, and it's pretty much the same in both the arteries and veins. It simply serves to protect the lower tunics. So that's the uh, basic anatomy of the artery and vein. Now, as I mentioned, veins, the blood in veins is at very, very low pressure. And what drives blood or moves blood is its movement for high, from high pressure to low pressure, down its pressure gradient. Because there's very little uh, pressure in veins, there's not a lot driving blood through veins. So there are some other structures or mechanisms that help move blood through veins. One, notice that veins have valves, and these valves have the same uh, effects as they do in the heart, making sure that blood flows in one direction or one direction only toward the heart. Second, many veins are deep in muscles. 
skeletal muscles specifically. And as those skeletal muscles contract, the skeletal muscles are always contracting, they help milk the vein and move blood through the vein toward the heart. And of course, as we exercise, the more we move those skeletal muscles, the more milking they do of those veins. Lastly, for the veins that are in the thoracic cavity, bringing blood uh, very close to the heart, um, there is what's called a respiratory pump. Basically, as you inhale, the uh, pressure in your thoracic cavity drops and the pressure in your abdominal cavity increases. And that helps drive blood from um, the more inferior portions of your uh, body, the abdomen specifically, toward the veins of the thoracic cavity. And that, and that just happens as you breathe, as you inhale and exhale. There's a drop in pressure in the thoracic cavity, increased pressure in the abdominal cavity, and that helps drive blood uh, toward the heart. So those are the three mechanisms that help move blood through the veins, valves, milking of skeletal muscles, and the respiratory pump. Lastly, we have the capillaries. So the capillaries are very, very thin walls. In fact, they basically consist of a tunica intima by itself. You have the layer of simple squamous epithelial cells, very thin, and a basement membrane. And of course, the capillary wall has to be very thin in order for substances to cross it. Remember its function. Later on, we'll talk about the different mechanisms by which substances cross this wall, which include diffusion, osmosis, um, endocytosis and exocytosis, as well as a process called bulk flow. And the, the uh, movement of substances across the wall of the capillary is called capillary exchange. As I said, that'll be the last topic that we cover in the cardiovascular system. Let's talk a little bit more about these capillaries. So these capillaries exist as capillary beds. I want you to imagine that surrounding all these capillaries are different tissues, right? And it's across this, these capillaries or this capillary bed that substances are exchanged. Here we have uh, on the arterial side, oxygenated blood entering the capillary bed. And then on the um, uh, Ven uh, venual, venual side, we have deoxygenated blood leaving, right? So this, notice that um, there are these little muscles called sphincter muscles. The sphincter muscles are nothing more than round muscles, like the um, orbicularis oris that surrounds your, the opening of your oral cavity, your mouth, or the orbicularis oculi that allows you to, you to squint. They're just circular muscles. And what they do is they can contract and actually cut off blood flow to the true capillaries. Right, and so you can get something that looks sort of like this, where the blood is being shunted across. Now, this is not cutting off blood completely to these tissues; it's just reducing it. There are there are times where um, you don't need maximum blood flow to a specific tissue. So, imagine you're sitting down, as I imagine you are right now, looking at this video, you know, and you're not exercising, so you're not really moving, doing a lot of of, of uh, working of the muscles of your legs. So probably you've got uh, these these capillary beds in the muscles of skeletal muscles of your legs that um, aren't getting maximum blood flow. These sphincter muscles are closed and blood is going across what's called the vascular shunt. Right. So there's minimum blood flow there. If you were to get up and start walking around, you start using those skeletal muscles more. These uh, smooth muscles, these sphincter muscles would relax, and there'd be increased blood flow to those skeletal muscles. It's just one of the ways where your body can decrease blood flow to tissue uh, that don't need as much oxygen and nutrients and increase it to those parts of the body that need it more. So we have the vascular shunt, and then we have the true capillaries. Okay, that's it for this topic. I will see you online.